Okay, so hello learners, thank you for your love and support and this time we have decided to improve our content by introducing three new plans. So statistically it is shown that only 27% of the total registered students clear the qualifier, but 52% of our enrolled students clear the paper with flying colors after joining this program. So one may ask like what are the perks one will get after joining the program? One will get access to classes from expert faculties, live doubt classes to resolve all your doubts and detailed conceptual solution of all graded assignments, PVZ papers, mock tests and all materials that required to confirm your selection in qualifier and continue your journey in IT Madras, we are all gonna provide it. And you will also be added to member exclusive WhatsApp and Telegram group for instant reply and doubt resolution. And you know what? All this for just Rs 599 which is just one time investment for a month. So, what are you waiting for? Grab the opportunity to call yourself an IITN. So, we also have other plans like for 119 we will provide detailed solution of all graded assignment for your qualifier as eligibility to appear for qualifier exam depends on your marks in the graded assignment. One will also be added to member exclusive WhatsApp and Telegram group for instant reply and doubt resolution for just 119 rupees which is all it takes to confirm your hall ticket for the qualifier exam. And lastly, we are there to help you after your qualifier selection by providing detailed conceptual solution of all graded assignment, previous year papers, interim quiz, revision sessions, and everything, all the materials that are required for you to have a very good grade in your IT journey, and all the doubts will be cleared using the exclusive member-only WhatsApp and Telegram groups. Thank you for your love and support, and for more details, you can visit our website. Thank you. Greetings everybody, welcome to the part 1 video of Grid Assignment Computational Thinking uh, Week 3. So let us start the Grid Assignment first question. So here we are given a question, let us see in depth what is given. The following pseudocode is executed using the words data set. And let us analyze what the pseudocode is. Here P and Q both are zeros. And while table 1 has more rows, everything is in general. If x dot letter count, that means letter count if it is divisible by 2, then we are incrementing the value of p by 1. Therefore, p is equal to p plus 1. So, what does p store? P stores those number of I mean P stores the number of words whose letter count is perfectly divisible by 2 or in other words we can tell that <coughs> P stores the number of words with an even letter count so for the first question option A is correct and now coming to the, so to the second half of the pseudocode else if this is not the condition that is that uh, got satisfied then we'll be moving on to the next part which is if part of speech is an adverb but remember one thing if this is satisfying that means this even letter count does not satisfy so what does q store q stores the number of adverbs with odd letter count right so number of adverbs with an odd letter count is the most suitable answer with this we have solved both question 1 and question 2 so now come to third question guys the following pseudo code is executed using scores data set so let us analyze what the pseudocode is he is initiate it got, got initiated with a boolean value called true and now coming to the fourth point which is the classifying criteria if the gender is female that is if the card belongs to female <coughs> and apart from that if if the student got less than 60 in any of the one subjects 
see this is something like if one is true and the remaining are false then this complete statement turns out to be true so for that not to happen let us see when a remains to be true that is what they are asking in the question so they are asking in the question at the end of execution a e will be true if when will e become true <coughs> e will be e will remain to be true if this particular step called 5 does not satisfy the condition that means all these three values should be false <coughs> therefore how what we can tell here but remember one thing these are interconnected with OR operators <coughs> therefore the answer should be very accurate <coughs> so here the most accurate answer will be greater than or equal to in either physics chemistry or maths if you see here in either physics chemistry or maths that means there is a great probability that one can remain to be false and the others are true <coughs> greater than or equal to 60 so let us keep this sorted all female students have scores less than 60 this this is not what we want right this is not the correct answer there is at least one female student with scores less than 60 no <coughs> if it is less than 60 then E will be false so this is also not the correct answer all female students have scores greater than or equal to 60 in physics, chemistry and mathematics. Right. So, <coughs> this is, uh, we are also sorting option D. If you compare option C A and D, here the most important thing to observe is, they have used a word called either here. That means, there is a possibility that it can happen and it cannot happen it is just 50 50 for option a whereas for option d it is always greater than 60 that means the step 5 will always evaluate to false if this is false then what will e become e becomes true so in that way e remains to be true if all the girl students scored greater than or equal to 60 in all the subjects called physics chemistry and mathematics now coming to the fourth question the following pseudocode is executed using shopping bills data set Procedure shopping bill, uh, let me zoom out. Procedure shopping bills, I mean check shopping bills, accepts a card Y. It accepts a card Y and returns true. When does it return true? It returns true if the minimum total bill. Is greater than average total bill. If this is not getting satisfied, then it will return false. That's what they mentioned in the question. So let us uh, now. So now let us uh, carry on further. Choose the correct code fragment to complete the pseudo code to complete the procedure. Right. Therefore, here they have done everything. All things they have they, they have done perfectly. See, but here what they have done, what they have left over to us is that they have left us the important or, or we can also tell that to be the core concept of the question which is the minimum total bill is greater than the average total bill they have missed out on this part so we will have to include that part into this code and return them the correct answer to the user so now coming to the options See, uh, they they have only computed what average amount is. So in this variable, 
we are going to make use of this variable which has been declared and used in line 14 in the for the upcoming uh, code lines of statements so here what they give us they given us that minimum total bill should be greater than the average total bill so let us check for that things thing minimum amount no this is not minimum amount this is not the correct answer why the total bill amount see we should not include y because the shop name is already y and we, hence we should ignore that again why <coughs> this is obviously false because the option c is completely wrong answer because if it is not satisfying then definitely will be returning false only then no need to specify in this elimination procedure of finding the correct answer the option d is correct and most suitable if we do not follow the lo uh, logic of eliminating the wrong answers we can assure ourselves that d is the correct answer as they are doing what has been mentioned in the question in the question they have mentioned that minimum amount greater than average amount so option d is the most suitable answer now coming to question number five the following so the following pseudocode is executed using scores data set what will a represent at the end of execution a is equal to zero great let us note it out and while table one has more rows read the top row in table one and also we have initialized another variable named b to true if x dot physics see this is happening for every subject physics math physics and chemistry mpc if any of them is greater than or equal to 60 that least if that that means if the score is at least 60 for the student in any of the subject then we are updating b to false see after in the eighth line they are mentioned they have given us that if b so here you might be confused what value should we take here we should take we should only consider those statements which are assumed or uh, having a value to be true so here we are we are incrementing the value of a is equal to a plus one only when b is equal to true and when does b remain to be true b remains to be true if the students score less than 60 in all the three subjects so number of students who scored above 60 no who scored below 60 no or uh, a will always be zero no who scored exactly 60 no a will always be zero no in this way if you observe we got all the four as wrong answers but if you thought like me as well then you would done a very wrong way of understanding yourself i have played this trick only to test your understanding of this question based on the logic given here they are asking us what will a represent they will give us in a what do we store is that if you noticed we are using an end operator here that means if any one is a false then the complete statement will be false in this way it will be number of students who scores below 60 in at least one subject in at least any one subject so option b is the correct answer for the fifth question with this uh, we are ending the part one of this video guys uh, to access part two please stay subscribed to the channel and do like the video and share it as well thank you for watching have a great day ahead